Welcome to the Damon Wells Chapel at Pembroke College. Although we can't all be here together this year, I know that there are many of you watching this in Oxford, across the United Kingdom, and around the world. I hope you will feel the warmth of our community during this event and feel part of our festivities. It has without doubt been an unprecedented year for the college and to join you as master under these circumstances has been extraordinary and rewarding. What has been most remarkable is the response of all of our members uh, to the difficulties we have faced. Our fellows and academic staff, students, support staff, alumni, parents and friends. Earlier in the year, national lockdown was imposed and all teaching was forced online, prompting our first ever virtual Trinity term. Our academics had to adapt at incredible pace to deliver tutorials, seminars and lectures in this new way and to continue to provide every support possible to our students. Our junior common room and middle common room went to great lengths to keep the sense of community among our students strong, even when they were separated across the globe. Throughout the spring and summer, when Oxford was largely deserted and the quietest it may have been for centuries, the college catering team took up the task of providing meals for the homeless. And we all take great pride in their outstanding demonstration of our sense of civic responsibility. Ahead of the new academic year and determined to bring our students back to the unique benefits that teaching in person here in Oxford provides, our college staff worked extraordinarily hard, going above and beyond the call of duty to do everything they could to make the return of our students as safe as possible for all members of our community. The response of our students throughout Michaelmas term has been thoughtful, patient and kind, and we are immensely proud of the resilience they have shown and the way in which they have adapted to safety measures that were unthinkable just months ago. Despite the uncertainty, worry and toll that this pandemic has, it has exacted across the world, the College has managed to project its reach globally, even more than we did before, which is testament to the strength of spirit of all of our community. I hope this evening will bring all of you who may have missed an opportunity to visit College this year a little closer to Pembroke and we look forward to being able to welcome you back in better times to come. May I thank all of you who have been involved in the Herculean effort, both to organize this special event, particularly our organ scholars, Alistair Stone and Sophie Dunley, and all of the choir. Thank you to Alan Kradzik, our choral conductor, who has overseen all of the recording and editing of the choir's performances. I also express my thanks to the chaplain for leading our service and to Andrew Mitchell, Alumni Engagement Officer, who has brought us all together. I wish you a very happy and safe Christmas festival. At this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture, in human art and music, the tale of the loving purposes of God, from the first days of our creation and disobedience, unto the glorious redemption brought by this holy child. But first we pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth, and goodwill among all people, for unity within the church he came to build, between people of different faiths, and especially in this our college community. And because it would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, 
the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the vulnerable, and all who do not know love in their lives. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one for evermore. Psalm by U. A. Fanthorpe. The swallow said, He comes like me, longed for, unexpectedly. The superficial eye will pass him by, said the wren. The best singer ever heard, no one will take much notice said the blackbird. 
The owl said, He is whom, who is he, who enters the heart as soft as my soundless wings, as me. And when they saw it, 
they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. <coughs> Magi by W.B. Yeats. Now, as at all times, I can see in the mind's eye, in their stiff painted clothes, the pale, unsatisfied ones appear and disappear in the blue depth of the sky, with all their ancient faces like rain beaten stones, and all their helms of silver hovering side by side, and all their eyes still fixed, hoping to find once more, being by Calvary's turbulence unsatisfied. The uncontrollable mystery on the bestial floor. <laughs> Yeah. 
We pictured the meek, mild creatures where they dwelt in their strawy pen. Nor did it occur to one of us there to doubt they were kneeling then. So fair a fancy, few will weave in these years. Yet, I feel, if someone said on Christmas Eve, Come, see the oxen kneel in the lonely Barton, by yonder coom our childhood used to know, I should go with him in the gloom, hoping it might be so.
whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. God, 
and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into this world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things, earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and have loved this day and evermore. Amen.